Aloha and welcome everyone to Lillian's Vegan World. I'm your host Lillian Kumik coming to you live from gorgeous downtown Honolulu. Today's show is Plant-Based March Challenge Progress Over Perfection and I have my gorgeous guest with me today, uh, Sue Storfer, who, who has just moved to the islands, moved to Honolulu and she's my guest today on the show. A huge welcome to Sue. Aloha Sue. Aloha, Lillian. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to hang out with you today. <laughs> I've been looking forward to this show, to be honest, and bumping into you and meeting you at the farmer's markets um, has brought you and I together for this moment in time where we're going to share some, some of what you're getting up to here on the island. I just did mention that you are new to the islands. You recently moved here from the mainland. Um, how's it all going? How's your move? Yeah. <laughs> The move's been great, although it's been a lot harder than I thought. You know, when when you get enthusiastic about something, you're like, let's go for it. And you just push and jump. And then you're like, oh, wow, what have we done? But overall, it's been fantastic. I mean, my husband and I have been visitors to the islands for more than 20 years. So it's I fell in love a long time ago. time we visited in fact and like let's pretend we live here and so we really kind of changed the way we we walked around and one of the great finds at that time was what we called the KCC farmers market over at the community college and oh my gosh my heart just went oh look at all of this and that's when I really adopted what Hawaii was telling me even then you know grown here not flown here and so when we got the opportunity to actually pick up stakes and jump we just said you know Hawaii is going to be the place where we're going to come back to life we're going to come back to life on the island and uh, we're going to come here and serve and listen and honor and bring everything we've got and just live live big that's an, oh, that's amazing, Sue, and we're so glad and lucky to have you here. Oh, I also feel so blessed to be living in Hawaii. It is truly, for me, a vegan paradise, and I, true, I believe that so much so that I named my newly released cookbook Hawaii, A Vegan Paradise, and we'll get into all the reasons why this is the perfect place to you know, delve into a plant-based diet. But Sue, I do want to introduce you and my apologies for not doing so uh, during the introduction that you are a filmmaker and story strategist. Absolutely. That very exciting. Well, you know, it is. I've been very fortunate. Um, my whole career, I have worked um, in the TV business and was able to create like short form informational promotional um, videos and things both on um, working and in a television station working for clients working for nonprofit organizations and and so that's been a great joy of mine and i've really enjoyed also actually helping formulate what those stories are because it's really important to find who you are in your core whether it's a person an organization or a project you really need to get to that true center and once you find the true center you can share that story with some authenticity and everybody wants to hear the real thing so my husband and i do that together and he's a brilliant storyteller in his own right and we're just thrilled to be here and and share some of the great stories that we're going to find so <laughs> And I'm lucky to have you here to share your story about some something you are just uh, entering into, which is the plant-based March Challenge organized by Changing Tides Foundation. And you can go over to their website, which is changingtidesfoundation.org and enroll. There's still time to enroll in this, in this month of plant-based eating. Tell us about this challenge and, and what, what it can do for, for viewers or people who are interested in starting a plant-based diet. Yeah, the whole point of it is, again, we talked about this progress over perfection. You know, it's not really a competition. It's just a challenge to get better at something, get better at it. So the point of the challenge is to eat as many plant-based meals as you can. Some people have dietary restrictions that really prevent them from going completely meatless or going without dairy completely or eggs completely. But really, it's about taking a step forward and being as intentional as you can. And at the same time, educating yourself 
ourselves as to some of the impacts that animal agriculture have on our world and to really understand that. And honestly, that was really the beginning of, of my journey um, in stepping away from a really meat centric diet to something that's more plant based. And so the challenge is really just a refresher for me. You know, sometimes we get a little off base, you know, we all start January and we're like, I'm going to do this and this. And then we kind of go and fall back into some of our habits. And then, you know, we wake up after Valentine's Day with an empty box of chocolate on our pillow. And it's like, <laughs> okay, I, I really, I really got to, got to get some community help. So that's what Changing Tides is about. It's, it's an organization that was founded by a lovely group of ladies who shared the big beautiful mission of creating ocean health and community vitality and, and equity and opportunities. And that's a lot of the things that I believe in too. And Leah Dawson's a friend of mine. I've known her for a lot of years and she's one of the co-founders. So when the challenge came around, I was like, absolutely. This is just this, the kick that I need to get me back into a little bit more intentional way of eating. And, and in Hawaii, oh my gosh, look at the choices. I mean, look at the choices. Hmm. That's interesting, Sue. Um, what kind of support does this organization give you if you were to enroll in the plant-based diet? It's already March 4th, so four days into the into the challenge, but still plenty of time to to log on and you know enroll and join. What kind of support are they offering? Sure, there is a guide. So once you once you sign up, there is a, a guidebook that gets really gives you the skeletal outline of what you're doing and how to approach it. And then they're also sending out regular emails with updates and recipes and encouragements and things like that. So there is a lot of things that are going on throughout the month just to really get people to, you know, to keep their energy up. But even in the very basics, I mean, really just to sign up, take a look at it, get the guide, read through it. And again, give yourself permission to step as far as you can um, and not really worry about the perfection of holding something absolutely tight in rules. It's, it's not about rules. It's about becoming and evolving on our journey together. Yes, I did take a look at the, uh, the website. It's, it is very interesting, I must say, and I do urge any of the viewers to go over to changingtidesfoundation.org and take a look at their webpage because they are doing a lot of other very eco um, conscious uh, projects as well. But uh, Sue, how do you start this? The number, the million dollar question to me all the time is where do I start? Where do I start? How do I start a plant-based diet? So four days into this, what was start from day one? How do you begin? Well, what I, first of all, my mindset was I really need to think about how I can change my mind about things because there was a time, you know, when I grew up, if we didn't have meat in a meal, I felt like I hadn't eaten. I mean, I could have eaten to the point where I couldn't put any more food in my body. And yet if there had not been meat in that mix, I would have said, I didn't have lunch. I didn't have breakfast. I didn't have dinner. So I really had to change my mind. And that happened one day when I was having a sub and I realized that the turkey was so wet up thin that I probably wouldn't, I couldn't even really taste it in there. You know, I couldn't taste it. I could taste the crunchiness of the cucumbers and the juiciness of the tomatoes and the bread. And yet Turkey, was there turkey in there? I missed that. So I started to realize I didn't have to have it. And, and then I also really thought about the fact that when I wake up in the morning, I like to eat. So the fact that I'm not eating eggs, I had to just think, well, what else can I eat? Oh, I can eat anything I want. I can have rice. I can have broccoli. I can have sweet potatoes. I can have whatever I want, you know, for breakfast, as long as it's not eggs. So really the first step is just changing your mind and, and accepting the fact that you're going to find out some new things. And then one meal at a time, what else can I do? Go to the store, get some stuff, you know, build some armament like salads. This is one of my favorite things from the farmer's market. If I could show you. Sure. Oh my gosh. Oh, this beautiful cabbage. 
we have learned so much about this lovely thing. In fact, this has been my best friend in the fact that instead of making pasta, what I learned to do was to cut cabbage into little ribbons, almost like little fettuccine ribbons, and then use that for the basis of either an Asian dinner or an Italian dinner or something like that. So I started to just experiment with things and realized that, man, like, like these little guys, mushrooms. Mm. And in fact, I got, I, I grew these mushrooms in my house, but mushrooms are a fantastic replacement for meat. If you can marinate them like in teriyaki or something like that. So it's really about just thinking, well, what do I like? And, and let's load up on that. And meantime, let's find some other things one at a time, one at a time. Yeah. You bring up an awesome point. Yeah. There is definitely no lack of uh, food out there. If you go plant-based, in fact, I'm going to say that probably vegans or people on a plant-based diet eat more of a variety of ingredients than non-vegans because we do go through all the beans and lentils and legumes, vegetables that people have never heard of. I, I guarantee not many people pick up a red cabbage or a purple cabbage often. And by the way, my favorite way of enjoying that is just stir fried with a little bit of olive oil and balsamic reduction. Yeah. Chopped macadamia nuts on top. Yeah, that crunch is incredible. Not to mention um, red and purple foods have a lot of antioxidants. So excellent yeah. for your health as well. Um, Sue, there are such things as vegan egg dishes. <laughs> they're actually, have to help they're actually have a to lot. Help yes. I haven't I haven't gone down the path as as much as I can on the exploration end of it. So believe you me, your book has been inspirational to me and I will tackle some of that stuff. But it was at least in my beginning phase was what do I already like? And then how can I increase that maybe even in percentages and then one step at a time? You don't have to take it all on at the same time. You can just go a little bit like, like I love sweet potatoes. Guess what I found at the market here? An Okinawa sweet potato. And it's mm. purple on the inside. It's beautiful. So that led me to go, hey, I can do this and 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 I can include it in a salad. And I can. So I started to experiment, you know, with the things I already liked and like Brussels sprouts and and you know, what can I do with those? And so yes, I promise Lillian, I will be following you to figure out yeah. all of those other meal stretching opportunities that I, uh, <laughs> I think uh, I think you're doing amazing Sue honestly what what you're pulling out we, we are going to show the viewers some slides that you um, you are going to share with us about food that you're creating and it is very beautiful let's look at one before the break let's have a look at what you've been cooking up Sue that is gorgeous explain to the viewers what it is uh, I know. Well, one of the challenges was again to replace meat. So what can I do with my mushrooms? What I discovered with these beautiful oyster mushrooms, and you can use them with other mushrooms, is that I could take olive oil and like chicken seasoning, they make it with salt, without salt, your favorite poultry seasonings, and just stir fry those, those bad boys, those little strips. And it actually is really close to giving you the experience of chicken. So what I did there was I just took some glass noodles, some Asian noodles, because like my family loves udon and, 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 you know, bowls, and then used those mushrooms instead of the chicken. And then I got some great little microgreens from the farmer's market here, and I was able to create that, which again, replaced what we already love, but it just substituted out one particular ingredient. Mm. And you've done you've done an amazing job with it. That actually has become, I'm guessing, a, also a gluten free dish. That you've Absolutely. used the the glass noodles, um, which are made from rice or a yeah. starch, depending on on which ones you use. Some of, some of them are made from mung bean starch, which is also gluten free. Yeah, I found, I found some ones here that are actually made with sweet potato starch. So mm -hmm. again, yeah, I've really been working hard to to watch the gluten and to challenge myself because maybe I might not be as sensitive to other as other people are, but I really do want to walk alongside a lot of people who are to find some really good new solutions for that. So that has been a big part of my journey too. So thank you. 
And just the, your whole mindset you, that you mentioned earlier, you're, you're so positive about this. And that's what I think people need to embrace when they're, cha- because basically changing your food patterns is just breaking old habits. So once you learn how to break old habits, set goals, you know, if you're going to try this challenge, there's the goal right in front of you one month plant-based, I think when you start setting goals, that's when you start achieving and progressing towards, you know, what it is that you you want to achieve. So I love the mindset and the positive um, attitude that you have, Sue. We are going to take a quick break and uh, come back with more of Sue Stauffer and her March challenge on a plant-based diet. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Lillian's Vegan World. I'm your host, Lillian Kumik, vegan chef and uh, cookbook author. I'm also part of the Think Tech Hawaii team of citizen journalists, and we bring forth news that's happening in and around Hawaii, um, important stuff that you all need to know and that we love to share. So welcome back to the show. Um, I'd like to welcome back also my awesome, gorgeous guest, Sue Storfer, new on the islands here and just beginning her March plant-based diet with the uh, tide, pardon me, changingtidesfoundation.org um, challenge. So Sue, welcome back. Thank you, Lillian. Thanks for letting me hang out with you today. My pleasure. Sue, before we go on, I do wanna to mention to the viewers that my uh, cookbook might help if you're interested in learning more about vegan cooking. It was just released in uh, November of 2020 last year. It's called Hawaii, a vegan paradise, over 120 plant-based recipes of the islands or from the islands and inspired by the islands. You can buy the book um, on, in most stores around Hawaii and on Amazon. Uh, it's also available on Barnes and Noble. You can order the book directly from the local, manu- the local publishing house, Mutual Publishing. Um, find me and more about what I'm getting up to on the islands at lillianvegan.com. I'm also on YouTube, Lillian Vegan, Facebook, also Lillian Vegan. And I have an Instagram account, Lillian Vegan, underbar Chef Hawaii. So I'm doing lots of stuff. And I also have my show here, Lillian's Vegan World with the gorgeous Sue. (laughs) So let's take a look at at some more of the food that you've been creating because this is so important. We were talking before we started filming about how we do eat with our eyes. And one thing I always, always try to tell people, I've been teaching cooking classes for about 20 years now. And one thing I always tell people is make it look good, put the effort into it. Everybody's too rushed in their lives, you know, I cannot fathom sitting down to a meal in my home, eating on a paper plate. This will never happen in my home. <laughs> I understand there are busy people and, and all that sort of stuff, but you know, you also will be um, leaving less of a footprint when you start thinking about what it is that you're using on a daily basis and throwing away things like paper plates, plastic, plastic cups, plastic straws, mm-hmm. um, things like that. I think when you start delving more and more into a plant-based diet, you start to realize that there's, there's a bigger picture out there other than just the food. So be aware, be mindful of, you know, what you're 
what you're contributing as far as your carbon footprint. So talking about going back to presentation and making food look beautiful, you, Sue, are a very, or I should say your husband is a very lucky man. Let's have a look at some more of your creations. That, that is so beautiful. Thing. That is such a simple thing. One of the things I discovered when I got here and went to the farmer's market, and I really wanted to try everything again, right? I really wanted to just take a fresh idea and just try it again. You know what that is? That's poi. That is poi. That is an avocado sitting on top of poi with lemon juice and olive oil and some tahine seasoning, which is, a, which is a seasoning blend that one of my friends who's born in Mexico, she gave us on the way out the door. And so I, I have fallen head over heels back in love with poi. And, you know, that was so satisfying to me. And I made it for myself. Okay. I made that dish for myself. And, and yeah, I mean, it's fun. It's, I also found that during the pandemic, when we were all kind of confined so much mm -hmm. that it, it became my creative outlet. I couldn't do a lot of the things that I was even doing during my profession for my creative expression. And I just found food was one of the most brilliant medias to work with because we all eat every day and it's just an opportunity to really indulge in color and texture and flavors. And it's a real joy to use food as a creative outlet. It absolutely, it absolutely is. I couldn't agree more. Um, to, to cook, cooking is so gratifying, isn't it? There's something just so satisfying about having something you created from scratch turn up on a, or end up on a, on a plate looking so beautiful like that. Um, I do want to mention to people who don't know what poi is, it's actually just taro. It's steamed or boiled taro that's been pounded down to, to form a very glutinous kind of paste, if you will. Very, um, I, I would have to say this is a, this is one that might require some uh, tastings before you become accustomed to it. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things, Lillian, that has helped me with food and getting over some of my food bias <laughs> is to start to think about it and then to look for bridges with things that I already love. And what I found with Poi when I really looked at it was that it's very similar to other things in other culinary expressions. Poi is a neutral kind of a thing, as you know. And so you can add other flavors to it. I kind of, like my husband loves um, Lebanese food and Middle Eastern food, and he will use what he calls leban, which is actually yogurt. And so, you know, he, he doesn't like yogurt, but he'll eat leban. So in taking the, that particular thing, you can kind of blend it with other stuff and it complements the same way that like creme fraiche does or, or even mashed potatoes. If you think of poi in those kind of neutral um, perspectives. So I found that there's one manufacturer here that actually creates a poi that does not quote unquote ripen over its lifetime. The same way like yogurt wood or cheese wood that might get more pungent as it ages. Um, the way that they make it, it holds that really neutral flavor. And because it's held that neutral flavor, I can use it in all kinds of ways. And experimenting with it has been fantastic. And also it, it really fulfills my wanting to be um, non-gluten and have a, a friendly carb base. So I can use it at breakfast. I can use it in all kinds of ways. But, but yeah, I have to sneak it in some people, <laughs> even if it is purple. That's so creative. I would never actually have thought to pair it with avocado, but I, I can see that creamy, yeah, that creamy texture on top of the, the, the very neutral poi would, would work. Yeah, very yeah. Poi, poi has a bad rap, but as I really looked at how can I honor Hawaii, I went back to look at that history and poi was a staple. It was a very mm -hmm. stable carb carbohydrate that went with your fish and it went with some of the other more sour things. And, and it was a very basic element. And when I looked at basic elements in other culinaries, like rice is a staple in, in some and potatoes in another, and, you know, poi was a very well used. So I went back and I go, you know, this just deserves another shot. And I really can't say enough nice things about it. Now, if I can get my husband on board, I haven't done that yet, but we're still hoping. 
<laughs> yeah, my husband is the same. He's he's definitely not a um, for the poi, but again, I think it's just about tweaking tweaking some of these things to you know make them taste better to you because that's the whole point. It's how how it tastes on your palate and you know who you're cooking it for. Um, you'll see you'll see in one of the other pictures that you have, and we'll talk about it when when it comes up because I know that you and I talked about one other presentation coming up and and mm -hmm. poise in there. Okay, let's have a look at another slide. Definitely. In fact, there it is. <laughs> Back there it is. The, the magic of TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now see, that was me going, what else can I do? I need a snack. I want something, you know, that I can have. And on that plate is bok choy. And bok choy, as you know, is a, is a beautiful member of the Asian cuisine family. Mm -hmm. And it has this great crunchiness and it has this little kind of spiciness to it. So I'm like, hey, I can use that. I know, you know, my world, I used to use celery. So why can't I use bok choy? And then what I did with the poi was I started to mix it with things and I mixed it with teriyaki and I put a little bit of almond almond paste you know, in it because when I was in Orlando where we used to live, I got to know some Vietnamese um, recipes and things and I loved the peanut sauce. So I started mixing and experimenting and I went, wow, this is almost kind of like bean dip when I was in college and we were all living on bean dip. I, and if I set that down in front of you, you might not ever figure it out. But that is so clever, Sue. Honestly, because when you think about it, um, the taro paste or the poi is actually very kind of dippy, isn't it? It is almost like a dip, but I don't think that's how people normally use it, which is fantastic. You've found your own way to turn it into, you know, something something completely different, which yeah, just blows my mind how people, when you start to think out of, outside of the box, you mm -hmm. know, you come up with all these brilliant ideas. And when it comes to food, as you said, it's just so gratif gratifying. I, when I saw that dish, I was thinking, that's, I could see that like in a magazine. That is like it, a it, compliment. Yeah. It, I mean, come no, really, no, really, because it's so simple. But, you know, the beauty of the food in Hawaii is that it actually is simple. The problem is, most people mess with it too much and, and try to you know turn it into something that it's not but Hawaii has a lot of food to offer that's what was so exciting when I was writing my book like learning about all the like things like poi which really don't travel very um, very well outside of Hawaii I don't think many people are used to it although it is a Polynesian staple so you will find it in other islands like Fiji and Tahiti and um, places like that but it is a it is a fun way to to cook. I love the way you think, lady. Thank you. Well, I've had some great I've had some great help, you know, in my in my previous days in in marketing and promotion. I've been surrounded by creative people whom we were always challenged to come up with a new way of saying something. So I've been very fortunate that I'm encouraged by a lot of others who continue to say we're all born creative. We just don't exercise our creative muscles enough. But the more that you just give yourself some freedom and we call it, you know, uh, I tell my husband every day, it's an experiment. I, I'm a jazz artist in the kitchen. So I don't know what's going to jam today, but you know, that gives us some liberty. It gives me liberty to test and try stuff and to not worry about pass fail. I mean, just not worry about it, just try it. And if you love it, maybe somebody else will love it. Mm. That, that is a good point to bring up. And I do love what uh, Changing Tides, the Changing Tides Foundation say on their website, something along the lines of uh, progress over perfection. And yeah. that's what we I named the show today. It really is. any. It, any aspect of your life, it can be incorporated into your, you know, your social life, your, your work life, um, your family life, progress over perfection. When we try to try to make everything so perfect, it, it doesn't work in a world like ours, does it? But no, progress no. does. Yeah, progress is, um, is breaking the old habits, um, maybe obtaining or attaining new habits that that work for you and work for the planet. So again, when it comes back to the vegan lifestyle, it's it's about working together, getting connected, getting you know, getting on board, feeling 
sharing that energy that you have with the rest of the planet and not just focusing on, you know, my little small world, I want to do this, I want to continue to support the slaughter of animals, you know, we've got to think, we've got to think more about what's going on around us. And I think having this plant based March challenge is a fantastic way to, to challenge yourself and do something fun. It looks like you're just having a ball. <laughs> oh, I, I totally am. I mean, I mean, I brought some of my little friends that I got at the farmer's market. I mean, here's our little friend, Bok Choi. And look at how and fresh that's, yeah. It hasn't you know, been sitting in plastic under fluorescent lighting you know, in a supermarket. When they were like, this is spinach. I'm like, it is, are you sure? But of course there's so many varieties of things that you don't always get to see. And of course, you know, I, I, they have, you know, beautiful onions and I got lemons. I mean, I got all kinds of stuff. Oh, and Mr. Happy Sweet Potato is another different kind of sweet potato. So I've just had a great time. I mean, I look forward to Farmer's Market Saturday and my husband and I have just, you know, we go running and, and I just go, what's this? What's this? Like in my fridge right now is this cutest little tree fruit called Chico. And I was like, what's this? And he goes, you're going to have to let it get kind of mushy, squishy. It gets, you know, it, it needs to kind of be close to feeling like a rotten tomato before it's really good. And I'm like, okay, but oh my gosh, it's like this beautiful little cross between a peach and a pear that kind of has a flavor like brown sugar. I mean, so I just, I look forward to it all the time. I, I have picked up some things that didn't work out so well. I mean, you know, but it's again, you know, it ask questions, ask questions, ask questions. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I, but I found some great things and I found new ways to, to eat and it's been a lot of fun. Well, Sue, it has been a lot of fun having you on the show. And I hope that viewers uh, take all of this in and, um, you know, find that positive, that positive uh, vibe that will get you through anything you challenge yourself to do in particular you know starting new eating habits so sue thank you so much for your insight sharing your journey i wish you all the best of luck um, with the rest of the month the challenge and uh, your new life here on the islands mahalo for for sharing your story thank you lillian and i look forward to learning lots more from you as well so Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for tuning in to another episode of Lillian's Vegan World. I look forward to seeing you on the next show where I'll be uh, talking with a vegan cardiologist and getting his insight into what really goes on and also the, uh, um, the vaccine that does contain animal ingredients. So looking forward to that. Take care, stay safe and see you next time. Aloha.